So this is Sandy Peterson, and now we're going to talk about spaceships. And uh, this is another quiz. If you're sick of quizzes, um, there may not be any for money for a while after this, but uh, who knows? I like quizzes. Mostly not because the quizzes themselves are cool, because I get to talk about a whole bunch of weird movies that otherwise, you know, kind of on the same basic topic. So let's talk about this. By the way, this ship at the front of it is not in the quiz, because, like, it would be dumb. So let's go on. So first we're going to have a bunch of one-point spaceships. So give yourself one point for these. And as always, if you get a really high score and you can prove it to me in person, then I will buy you a drink. And you don't have to prove it like beyond the chat or whatever, right just like kind of convince me and I'll buy you a drink. You, you have to get me at a convention or somewhere though. Um, I'll be in Germany in October though, so there's a good chance if you're European. First ship. Woohoo! I think everyone can get this one. And this was kind of cool because it was, um, it gave evidence that the U.S. history was good because it's named after famous American ship. And of course, this is the NCC 1701, which is the USS Enterprise. And um, it's interesting to know that if in the Battle of Coral Sea, the Japanese had hit the Enterprise instead of harder, instead of the, the Yorktown, we might today have this be the Yorktown instead of the Enterprise. So anyway, there it is. It's the Enterprise, and it is a great spaceship. And as a kid, I would watch this show, and this was the first show where spaceships weren't flying saucers or rocket ships. Although the, the front disc is kind of flying saucery. And so we would sit around, me and my friends, and try to figure out why the ship was designed to look like this. And it was pretty cool also, because clearly this thing cannot land on a planet's surface. It's made to be in space, which was cool. Anyway, we just, like, it was fascinating. It was a great science fiction show, and it has a lot of features of it, which I won't go into now, because we have other ships to do. But let's go on to ship number two. Woohoo! And this is a thing that today is as famous, probably, as the Star Trek stuff, because this is, of course, a... X-Wing from Star Wars, and it is a true spaceship, not a fighter, because we know from the second movie that you can fly in one of these things across the galaxy, not across the galaxy maybe, but at least from one star system to another star system. I like that you can see the little R2-D2 unit in it that I guess does repairs and stuff. Anyway, X-Wing Fighters, an iconic thing, and this was interesting because in Star Trek, the ships are portrayed as more like ship-to-ship -ship stuff, like World War I cruisers and battleships fighting, and in Star Wars, suddenly there's carrier action, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, kind of updated, I guess. Okay, on to number three. What is this? This is from the greatest Star Trek movie ever made, because it is from Galaxy Quest, which if you love Star Trek and you haven't seen Galaxy Quest, do yourself a service and watch it, because it is a treat. And uh, it's funny, and it's good, and it, and it, and it like, pulls the... Uh, the, the curtain away and lets you look at how goofy Star Trek is and that's cool because if you like Star Trek like I do you also know it's goofy and that's okay. But I won't say any more about it because spoilers and stuff but man alive if you haven't seen it go see it. Uh, maybe I can trick you into go seeing it by telling you that that uh, Severus Snape is in it which is actually true. So now on to the next thing. Here we are. A lot of people have seen this. I've talked before about how I'm not a super fan of this show because I prefer to have my own crappy friends make fun of the movies instead of having fake friends but hey they are actually pretty funny and they have some clever things. And this is, of course, the Satellite of Love from Mystery Science Theater 3000. And it's probably intentionally shaped like a penis, but it wasn't my decision. On to number five. Okay, so this was a big deal. This was the first um, knockoff of Star Wars, of course. And it was actually turned out to be a pretty good knockoff. Um, and this is, as we know... The Galactica from Battlestar Galactica, which was redone recently and and is good. Even the new one. The old one had some good parts, some bad parts, but overall was good. I liked the space battle scenes in it. It was kind of cool that the that battle stars were tougher than the, the Cylon ships, but, but there was more of them, so it still had a problem. Anyway, I liked it and uh, I'm sure everyone kind of likes it, but no one loves it the way that you love Star Wars or Star Trek, or at least like we used to before our franchises were killed by Hollywood. And that's the one thing that now unites Star Wars and Star Trek fans, knowing that their franchises have been soullessly, have their souls ripped out. Thank you, Hollywood. On to number six. Woohoo! So this is a show that you guys probably know better than me, so you probably know this guy better than me, but I know what it is too because it is the Futurama ship. I guess it's really the Planet Express, but it's like their spaceship. And um, 
I thought it was interesting that they didn't make the ship look that goofy. I mean, it's a little bit goofy, but it's not real goofy. It's not like Jetsons level goofiness. It's almost like they wanted you to believe in the spaceship a little bit. And it's also interesting that they made it look like a Buck Rogers ship, like the rocket ships they used to have in the old days instead of like a Star Trek ship. So I guess, you know, they know what they're doing. On to number seven. Anyone recognize this? Hopefully you do, because it's from a pretty famous uh, uh, science fiction movie, because it is The Discovery One from 2001 A Space Odyssey in which Hal, and, and here's a trivia thing you probably all know, but on the off chance someone from Tajikistan is watching this, Hal, the initial letter H-A-L, are this is IBM except one letter earlier. So the H, like, so it's IBM, but it's H-A-L. So that was, it was really a knockoff of IBM. Um, back when IBM was like the big computer guy, which, you know, they're not now, but whatever. Okay, on from 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was an attempt to make realistic science fiction, to number eight, which is not an attempt to make realistic science fiction, but an attempt to make fun science fiction, and I loved this show like everyone else, and was sad we got cancelled like everyone else, but on the other hand, the fact that it got cancelled, and this is of course the Serenity from the TV show Firefly, which is also interesting because Firefly is the name of the class of ship that this is. It's a Firefly. But the name of this particular one is Serenity. There are presumably other fl Fireflies going around somewhere. Um, but that was interesting. Anyway, the, the, the thing that was interesting is that perhaps the fact that it lasted one season is kind of good because it meant that we can look back at that season and it never got a chance to really jump the shark and get sucky. Um, I guess it kind of jumped the shark and got sucky with the movie. But, uh, oh well. Anyway, wasn't as sucky in the movie. <sighs> Firefly. Moving on. Woohoo! So, yeah, it's, it looks like an RV in space because this is, of course, you can probably tell it's obviously a comedy series. And it is Spaceballs, uh, which is actually a genuinely funny takeoff on Star Trek and Star Wars and the Alien of those movies. And I think that Mel Brooks did a good job. The Eagle Five, it's worth going off to find because it's funny and we'll move on from Spaceballs to number 10 one of the great science fiction movies this is before Star Trek so all the ships were rocket ships or flying saucers this is a flying saucer but despite that fact it's human ship from the United Federation of Planets and this movie is Forbidden Planet the UP Cruiser C-57D, which is a boring name. I like the idea of calling them like Enterprise, but it's not. It's C-57D. And it is Forbidden Planet, which has all kinds of good stuff going on and uh, is well worth watching. If you haven't, good heavens, pause the quiz and go watch Forbidden Planet and then come back. On to number 11. Except it's not number 11, of course. It is the moderate point scores, which are either two points each because they're harder. The previous ones were easy at one point. These are harder. Not super hard, but kind of hard. Let's go on to the first one, number 11. What's that from? I saw this on TV and really wanted it to be good. Um, it looks like it's made of construction material, because it probably is, and it is an eagle. There's more than one eagle. From Space 1999, I also really wanted to like it because it had uh, Martin Landau and Barbara Bain in it, whom I love them. But you know what? It never really was good. It always was kind of weird, but it had and it had these goofy looking ships that didn't seem like it'd do much. Oh well. I guess they were trying to be realistic, but they also had an Earth, like the moon leaving the Earth and wandering across the sky. So like, how realistic could they be? Anyway, Space 1999, an acquired taste, I suppose. Number 12. Yeah, this is not an acquired taste at all. This is good to the last drop. I recommend it. And um, this is actually from near the end of the movie, and that is, you, maybe you can't tell, but that is a flying saucer crashing into the Capitol building, which lets you tell exactly how big the flying saucers are, by the way, if you do a measurement. And this movie is Earth versus the Flying Saucers. And yeah, it's just called the Flying Saucer. But there's flying saucers, they come to Earth, they do terrible things. You do see the aliens in their suits. Uh, the suits make them look like these huge buff guys, but they're actually little scrawny things. And then the, at the end of the movie, they find out that uh, playing country music or something kills the uh, spaceship, so they start crashing into everything. And then we get to have Ray Harryhausen destroy all of our monuments in loving detail, and that is a great day in movie history. So let us go on to number 13. Yes, I love this ship because it looks delicate. And when it finally gets destroyed, I know, spoiler, whatever, it, it, it's like an exciting moment. And this is the ship Cygnus from the Black Hole. And uh, 
I have told you before that I love this movie, and uh, if you had seen it, you would too. And if you haven't seen it, then you wouldn't. But I guess that's kind of looking glass logic. Go see it, and you'll love it. On to the next movie, number 14. Um, you can look at this ship for a long time, and look how bright those colors... Now, stars do have colors, like there's red and blue and green stars, but they're not like neon red and blue like this. This is unauthentically red and blue, so I'm just letting you know. And this is, of course... Count Zarth Arn's flagship from StarCraft, which he made look like a giant hand for some reason. And it's even dumber in the movie than it looks here, but it looks pretty dumb here. Uh, anyway, StarCraft is a crappy Italian movie trying to be cool. And uh, I love crappy Italian, horror Italian movies, but uh, I guess I kind of love this one, but not enough to recommend it like I did The Black Hole. On to number 15. <laughs> This movie is an Italian movie I totally recommend and think is one of the greatest horror movies ever. And I have used it as Call of Cthulhu scenarios and science fiction adventures and all. I just love this movie. This is one of my go-to movies that I show people every chance I get. And it is The Planet of the Vampires. There's two spaceships on it, actually. The Argos and the Galea. And, uh... You're probably wondering how a movie called Planet of the Vampires can be good if you haven't seen it. And the answer is because they are not vampires. They are, in fact, mind parasites. And they are terrifying. Uh, and they resurrect the dead. And the colors of the whole thing are great. And this is, this is a wonderful, wonderful movie that I recommend without... It's just like one of my favorite movies. So if you think you would like any movies that Sandy likes, you would like this one. Planet of the Vampires. I do not approve of that name, but I approve of the movie. On to the next movie, number 16. I know it looks like a terrifying movie. You're probably thinking, hey, is this the ship from The Thing? And the answer is no, it is not. Because this is, in fact, the ship from Flight of the Navigator. And this is the Trimaxian drone ship, which is a wise, cracking, joking ship that goes along with the kid. And so it's pretty crazy. And if you like crazy 80s movies, this is one of them. And it features this as a wisecracker and joking thing. I, I'm shaking my head, you can't see it, but it's like, what were we thinking? Number 17. Oh yeah. So the problem I have with this ship, besides the fact that it has boobs, um, and it looks like a stock-eyed fly, is that um, the movie is overall not that bad. It's like they kind of wanted to make it into a parody, but they didn't really. The movie is... Battle Beyond the Stars. The ship is called Nell, because it's a girl, because duh. Uh, so Battle Beyond the Stars, which features all kinds of people like Robert Vaughn, is essentially the Magnificent Seven, which is, of course, the Seven Samurai. And it's the Seven Samurai in space, and Corman kept trying to make it jokey, but it kind of works without the joke, so I'm not sure why. At one scene, he has a heroic death by a major character trying to save the others, which is really cool. And then in another scene, he has people roasting marshmallows off or over an alien's body because the alien has a really high body temperature like thousands of degrees so it's like they weren't sure where they wanted to go I cannot say I wholeheartedly recommend if you want to watch a comedy in space I'd recommend Spaceballs or um, Galaxy Quest but there's this one too so on to number 18 yeah I like this one a lot you don't actually get a good look at the spaceship in this but the movie's so good it's, it's worth it and this is The Thing from Another World Man, this is a good movie. And what's happening here is that these the scientists have found, or the Arctic explorers have found something in the ice. And so they get out there, they can barely see it. So they're standing in an attempt to, at the edge of it, to see what shape it is. And then you can see that its shape is a round saucer. And that's when they realize it's a flying saucer. Bum, bum, bum. Which has a bigger effect on people from 1951. Because 1951, flying saucer meant alien spaceship but it's kind of cool because they were thinking it was an airplane they're trying to see what shape the airplane is to see what, what is it a b-52 what is it right but it's a but it's a it's a flying saucer so then they know and then they dig down to it and they get the alien and then the alien is an evil plant monster he's not the shapeshifter that you have in the later movies but but he's still pretty terrifying because he's like he's a vegetable right so if you shoot him it's like shooting a tree it doesn't kill it you know, it just like thunks into his trunk and then he's like keeps going so he's hard to kill which is good and he also lives on blood but he and plants seeds and grows really fast. Anyway, he's he's a dangerous, interesting alien that doesn't look that cool, but but his biology is cool, which is an interesting trait. And uh, he's huge because he's James Arness. And we'll go on to number nineteen now. Yep, there it is. Another thing that Star Wars gave us, and this thing is there it is. Buck Rogers, and this is the Draconia. You can see how much it's influenced by. Uh, 
uh, Star Wars. It's actually, I think, a better, a more interesting design than like the Star Destroyers and stuff. But they, you know, it's it wouldn't exist without the Star Destroyers, right? Because it because they came first. But at least they made an interesting design out of it. So there it is, the Draconia Buck Rogers TV show. Either you know about it and you want to see it, or you have seen it or you don't want to see it. And I won't try to adjust adjust your opinion on any of that next so i fought hard to try to find this tv show because i wanted to see it and it was really hard to get the actual episodes i could get like sequels or i could get the condensed movie but the actual i finally found the actual episodes in, uh, in a version from uh, malaysia i think and this is the ship is the yamato because this is space battleship yamato the movie, I think, is called Star Blazers, but I watched it and I mostly liked it. I really liked the battle scenes and other and uh, I didn't so much like the scenes where they had the, the girls wearing bikinis and dancing on the beach because I guess I'm a curmudgeon, but the battle scenes were good and um, it was an interesting plot line. I was kind of surprised, but it turned out that the Japanese thought that the humans having started the war kind of semi by accident meant it was OK for the aliens to kill us all. Um, maybe that's. The, the, the takeaway message that they got from being nuked in World War II. But still, overall, an interesting movie. Not movie, TV show with many good episodes. And uh, it's a pretty old anime from this. I mean, 75 is like Stone Age for those things, right? So on to number 21. These are hard. These are three points each because they're so hard. Really hard. If you don't get them, don't feel bad. They're hard. Here's the first one, number 21. If you're British, you probably already got this, because this is The Liberator from Blake's Seven, which is a TV show that is a serious science fiction movie from England, which a lot of theirs aren't, which is uh, supposedly really good. I've seen a couple episodes, but only a couple, and I am tempted to see more. I just haven't got the gumption to go and buy all the DVDs or look it up on Amazon or something. Maybe I should do that. Anyway, Blake Seven. Now on to 22. Okay, another, you know, this is kind of bogus because you can actually see the name of the ship on the side there, Starbug. But anyway, regardless, the ship is the Starbug and it's Red Dwarf, which is the uh, a comic British science fiction show, which is also worth watching. And uh, so I like the ship because it looks the, the Red Dwarf is kind of kind of realistic, but kind of goofy at the same time. It's not unrealistically dumb, you know, like I guess the office or something like but uh, but so the ship looks like it could be a real ship, but it also looks goofy and it does look like a bug, which is always a good thing. So we'll move on to number 23. What's this from? You could, if you look closely, you can tell that this is a drawing or a frame of animation. And you probably know what this is better than me because I'm not really an anime guy, but I have seen a little bit of this because this is the Bebop from Cowboy Bebop. I asked my son why it was called Cowboy Bebop and he says a cowboy is a, a bounty hunter, apparently. So they're bounty hunter Bebop. So there it is, you know, you know. Now, now you know if you didn't. You probably do because you probably watched the show. Number 24. What's this? This movie is the greatest fantasy fulfillment movie because it has this crappy kid who was playing video games in the arcade, which is the only place you could play him at the time. And so, of course, he's like wasting his life, as his parents say. But it turns out it's actually a training device to take him into space <coughs> and put him in this, which is a... Gunstar won, and now in this one single fighter, he has to go and face the evil bad guy and blow them all up. And um, the ship seems kind of odd and clunky, but whatever. The whole point of, of, of there being a purpose to play in video games is the cool part that makes us love it, right? So that's the thing. Number 25. Yeah, I like this movie a bunch. I think it was regarded as a failure in Hollywood, but I loved it, so it wasn't a failure for me. And this looks like an animal, not a ship, but it is a ship because it is the Black Electroid ship from Buckaroo Banzai. And um, I like this movie a lot, and I'm sad there wasn't serious... Ser uh, well, actually, I'm not. I'm not sad there weren't sequels to it, because I think we do too many sequels, and it's okay to have a movie just be good by itself. So there. On to the next. Yeah. This is the movie that, to me, proved that Avatar was stupid, even though it was, I think, before Avatar. Because this is the ship from District 9, and this is the Prawn Mothership, and the reason it makes Avatar look stupid to me is because in Avatar, um, James Cameron 
spared no expense in making the Navi look adorable and cute to you. They were, they had cute animal-like noses, they had boobs and slender bodies, they played with animals, everything about them was just so adorable. And they were even made to be blue instead of a gross pink or a gross green, because blue is a color that doesn't look human that is kind of adorable. But the prawns in District 9 are just monstrous, disgusting horrors. And yet, by the end of the movie, you are 100% on the prawn side. So that's movie making. Take that, Mr. Cameron, and your billion dollars of blood money for making me waste an hour or two hours of my life in Avatar. <laughs> okay, on to number 27. Yeah, I had this toy as a kid. You could, you could push a button on top of it and it would fire the missile out. I know it looks super goofy, and it kind of is, but this is from the TV show in the 60s or 70s, I guess uh, it's 1970 exactly, UFO, in which alien spaceships are coming to Earth, and these are interceptor ships that we actually have a secret moon base in 1970, which is pretty early on, given that we only landed on the moon the year earlier. But uh, we, these things take off, and they shoot that one giant rocket, and it will blow up a flying saucer if it hits. And uh, it seems like it could use more missiles than that, but hey, that's a really fat missile, so maybe that makes it better. The other weird thing about it was that the aliens, actually, though they're humanoid, they breathe water, and so their spacesuits are full of green water, which is, their ships must, maybe that's how we win, because if their ships are full of water, they must weigh a lot more than ours, um, right? So, on to number 28. I saw this movie as a kid. Um, I originally had this as being a one point a test, and then a friend said, no, no, it's, 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 it's harder than that. So I made it be a two point, and then the friend said, no, no, it's harder than that. Here it is as three points, um, but it is in fact a spaceship, though it can't go anywhere. It, I mean, it can go from Earth to the moon and back again. That's about as far as it can go. Because, and the guy's literally wearing a diving suit, and we're on the moon, and that's the Earth, and this movie is... First men in the moon. You see the plugs in the side of it that stick out? They're a shock absorber, so when it lands on the moon, it bounces around. And it moves by anti-gravity, which is cool. And the Selenites on the moon, this is the, one of the few movies that calls the lunar the moon men by the right name, which is Selenite. By the way, fun fact, things from, from Venus aren't Venusian, they're Cytherian. Now you know. Uh, it's a Greek thing. Anyway. Uh, the Selenites are bugs. They're not evil exactly, though they can be dangerous. And I like this movie, and I think you would too. And so we'll go on to the next movie anyway, because obviously I like a lot of these movies. I recommend them. This one is a nice, creepy alien thing, number 29. Boy, I, I like the design of this a lot. Uh, even if the movie, I didn't like it quite as much. But the movie is Life Force with, with David Bowie, I believe, as a space vampire. Um, and it's okay. It's not a great horror movie. It could have been better than it was. Um, but it's an okay horror movie. I guess if you wanted to see a science fiction horror movie kind of vampir vampirically oriented, I'd still say go watch Planet of the Vampires. But if you're scraping the bottom of the barrel, you can watch this one and you won't regret it. And on to the last movie, number 30. Ooh, what's this from? You probably, you may know, because this is the one scene we ever see from this movie, which is kind of dumb, but there it is. And it's obviously, it's, the space, this is in fact a spaceship, it has already landed, it came from outer space. This is actually not one of my favorite um, science fiction movies, because although it's scary during the first part of the movie, you eventually learn that the aliens aren't evil or bad, they're just like tragically misunderstood or something, and so it's kind of like this... Whenever the monsters turn out to not be bad, I always think it's sort of lame, so I thought this was kind of lame too, but there it is. So, I hope you liked my Spaceships film. I hope that you have an inkling to sign up for me as a subscription, get notifications, or perhaps buy things. Hopefully they're showing an image now of some things I have. I have a lot of things in my store you can buy, and uh, why aren't you buying them? Uh, well, because you're penniless like everyone else this year, but, uh, but uh, think of me if you ever do get any spare money. Thanks.